Hello everyone, this is the Great Pumpkin speaking, and welcome to this new episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. Last time, we hunted dragon, tonberries, and all kind of nice things, and now we're ready to tackle the last dungeons. Unfortunately, this dungeon is giving me some trouble for some reason, so we're just gonna do the intro as well as me going over the various parties and equipment that we're gonna use on this. Because I'm tired of re recording it. <laughs> so let's get going! Right, we're going in. It's time to break into Kefka's domain. What's wrong, Celeste? The statues give the espers the magical energy they need to live. If we destroy the statues, what will happen? I'm really not sure, but. The espers and magic too will most definitely disappear from this world. And then... What will happen to... Terra? Yep, didn't think about that, did you? So yeah, our first party... First you'll notice that I leveled most characters up to level 39 or 40. Because I felt this was a good level, which turned out to be a mistake because a lot of the monsters use level 5 or level 4 spells. So yeah, that's gonna make things a little difficult, but not too difficult. Our first party is gonna be comprised of Gogo, Mauro, Celeste, and Edgar. Second party is gonna be led by Realm, who's gonna get Mog. Sabin and Caesar. Last party is going to be comprised of Locke, Unshocked, Cyan, Shadow, and Gao. As you can see, we've got three party of four characters and we've got 14 in total. So Terra and Strago are going to be sitting this out. The reason for this is that the only game I've found that works with Terra without magic is with the Atma weapon, and of course the weapon that Celeste is using at the moment, so I don't need two of the same characters, which is rather ironic considering I'm using Gogo. <laughs> and I've got Strago, who has basically the same game as Realm, so no, not really any point of using him. Where are going? Jumping from the airship back on top of a mountain or a tower sounds really dangerous, as you can see from Gogo there. Especially for Realm, her legs are barely formed yet. Well, depending on who you ask. The statues are up ahead. Find into three groups and use the Y button to switch between them. Then, yep, what are our party looking like? Well, Gogo at the moment is equipped with the Mimic, Throw, Blitz and Item command. Blitz because I need him to heal with Mantra, and also because Blitz doesn't require particularly good stats to be effective. And the Throw command, because it's fairly helpful, so just throwing ninja stars or skin scrolls, it'll work. His stats are fairly average. He's equipped with a Magus Rod, which improves his magic damage as well as dealing more damage than what we usually got. He's got the Paladin Shield, which is the uncursed version of the cursed shield that we got back in Narsh. I uncursed it by fighting on the Veld in order to avoid gaining too much experience, which was around 200 battle or more, I'm not entirely sure. I say anyway, it's the best shield in the game, it's got protection against pretty much anything, so that, that makes him fairly powerful. He's got a Genji helmet and a dark gear, fairly standard stuff. I mostly try to maintain balance configurations, but I found out that that may not be the best way of doing things, especially for the relics. At the moment, Gogo's got the Atlas armlet, which improves his physical damage by 20%, which is good because he's got the blitz and he's gonna need every chance he's got. And the Zephyr cape, which allows him to avoid magic as well as damage to a physical damage. I might switch all of those relics for things like uh, the, what was it? The safety bit or the memento ring because it protects against death, which is a status that comes back fairly often during this tower. Okay, as for the next one, we've got Celeste with the Illumina, also known as the Lightbringer. The Lightbringer is a sword that 
deals automatic critical whenever you hit and consumes MP to do it. It also casts Holy on occasion, which means it is much like the Ragnarok we got in Narsh, because this is what we bet at the Colosseum to obtain this weapon. This weapon got slightly better stats, and as I said, it casts Holy instead of Flare. The thing about this weapon is that while extremely powerful on its own, using Offering or the Master Scroll with it isn't all that recommended because it halves damage and prevents critical, which stops its gain. Otherwise, Celeste is equipped with a Crystal Shield and Crystal Lamb, as well as the Minerva Bustier, an armor that only Terra and Celeste can use, and it's fairly powerful, good resistance. She's one of my strongest characters at the moment, really. Varro is equipped fairly... oh, right, I forgot. Stats for Celeste, she's got good vigor, good magic power, that's about it, nothing special. Tomorrow is equipped with standard relics with a rage ring, as well as the, uh, the rage ring that allows him to attack, uh, to throw his party members at the enemy, as well as the Atlas armlet which boosts his physical damage with his gun and eat. Tomorrow's got fairly normal status. He's got a good vigor though. Hmm. Edgar is equipped with the Holy Lance, Crystal Shield, Crystal M, and Force Armor to make him a little more resistant to stuff. Equipped him with the Atlas Armlet, hoping it's going to boost the damage of his drill or chainsaw, but I'm not entirely sure if it will. And he's got sprint shoes, because we need someone with sprint shoes. Why did I put Gogo? -Go? Because I need him as an healer. You'll see, every group has a dedicated healer, as well as someone with sprint shoes. Did I show Edgar stats? I didn't. There. Second group. With Realm. Realm is equipped with two Holy Ron, as well as a Cat Hood, that I got by betting stuff on the Colosseum, and a Behemoth suit. I'm thinking a Nutkin suit from, uh, that you obtain from a Chocobo, then a Muggle, then a Nutkin might be better, but I'm not entirely sure. I haven't had time to look it up. She's equipped with a Genji Glove, as well as a Pot Bracelet, which is going to give her the Protect and Safe status, which is going to be really helpful, as she's not all that tanky for a front row character. She's got decent stats, lots of magic there, which is going to be helpful with her weapon. Sabin is equipped with the Tiger Fangs, the strongest weapon I could find for him. The Force Shield, to improve his defense because it's fairly crappy. The Red Cap, which improves his HP, which helps with his Blitz Mantra. And the Red Jacket, which is an armor only he can use. He's got Atlas Armlet, for the same reason as Gogo, and the Sprint Shoes. He's the healer for this group. That is fairly basic, 80 Vigor, other stuff. I've got Mog equipped with the Holy Lance and the Thunder Shield. The thing about the Thunder Shield is that uh, unlike the Fire and Ice Shield, it nullifies Thunder damage and halves Fire and Ice damage. For example, the Fire Shield actually absorbs Fire damage, but it gives you a weakness to water. I didn't want that. He's got the Dark Hood. And he's got the Snow Muffler, also known as the Snow Scarf, which is one of the most powerful defensive items in the game. I got it by betting Behemoth Suits uh, at the Colosseum. So as I said, when you've got Thunder Shield, it's better than an Ice or Fire Shield. But if you've got better shields, you're probably better off using them. He's got a Dragon Setups, with a Dragon Boots and a Dragon Horn. Right, status. Fairly basic, nothing special, but he's pretty tanky. Sedzer is equipped fairly conventionally with the Man Eater at the moment, which we're gonna switch as long as we get his next ultimate weapon. With a Crystal Shield, Crystal Elm, and Force Armor to make him a little tankier, he's got the same problem as Edgar. He's equipped with the Coin Toss and the Beads, which allows him to evade things better. At this point, the slots might be better than the Coin Toss, but I prefer the Coin Toss reliability to them. So yeah, Scissor has got fairly average stats. We can tell I didn't use him much or I didn't specialize. And for the last group, we've got Locke equipped with two snipers, which is uh, the reason for this that he's got the offering in Gingy Glove, which allows him to attack eight times. Why the sniper, you ask? Because the sniper works in the back row. It's good with the offering, which give us, as I said, eight attack from the back row. It's good at fight against flying creatures. 
Of course, I'm aware that the Valiant Knife with the Offering or Master Scroll is actually better, because anyway, it doesn't have that much defense, so it will technically be better, but I feel this is a good setup. I equipped him with Jinji Elmelt and Jinji Armor to boost his battle power. Equipped him with Jinji Glove and Offering, and his stats are fairly basic. We lost him for a while, he didn't win much. Got Shadow with the Stunner, we got Kvaram the Cultist Tower. This inflicts stop when it's hidden, and it's fa fairly powerful. It's got the Genji Shield, Genji Armor, it's got good battle power and good defenses, I'm actually really satisfied with that. He's got as a relic hearings to improve his magic throwing items, as well as the hero ring which boosts everything. I'm not actually sure if the earrings work, but I'm hoping it does. As for his status, fairly basic. Sion is equipped with Himp equipment. So yeah, he's gonna be really tanky. And yes, don't hate me because I used the Himp spell, I mean, come on. <laughs> so yeah, as a dip. He's got about the same status, but he's got a defense of 255 and a battle power of 255. That's pretty much maximum. His magic defense is through the roof, too. Go is equipped with the Aegis Shield, the Dark Hood, and the Snow Muffler. Snow Muffler will probably be sufficient for his, for his defense, as he's already pretty stinky. See that 244 defense and everything else. But I feel the Aegis Shield is a nice safeguard for him. He's equipped with earrings to boost his magic rage, as well as print shoes. That's fairly good, we need that. And Gao can also double as an healer because of his rage. Did we see his status? Yeah, we did. It's fairly basic. He's got good, good magical power for someone that I didn't work too much on. So yeah, I aim for mostly balanced groups, but that may no longer be the case. I might start moving equipment around or things, but we'll see how that works. This is gonna take a while. This is not gonna be easy, but we're gonna do it. So, until next time, this was the Great Pumpkin. Thank you for watching, everyone. Bye bye!